Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here and welcome to my channel. So in this channel, we solve a lot of problems and today we will be looking at how to invert a binary tree. And I'm going to show you guys two approaches to solve this problem. I will show you the recursive approach as well as the iterative approach. So we have a lot to do today. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that red subscribe button at the bottom of this video, which helps me create this content for you guys. So let's go ahead and get started right away. Okay, awesome. So the first step is to understand the question. So in this question, we're given a binary tree. And what we need to do is um, mirror the uh, nodes of that binary tree. So for example, if we're given a structure like this, what we need to do is reverse the 2 and 7 here. We need to reverse the 1 and 3 here and the 6 and 9 here. So you can see that the output looks like um, the reversed version of that tree. So that's what um, invert means in this case. I, can, I know it can be confusing, like what do you mean invert a binary tree? Um, but this is what we need to output. All right, awesome. So now that we understand the question, let's look at some strategies on how, to, how we can solve this. Awesome, so we're gonna use recursion first to solve this problem. And the thing with recursion is that you need to plan your cases in advance which definitely helps you in the process of coming up with a base case and knowing um, where you need to stop the recursion and how you're going to plan and access each of the items that you're going to reverse in this case. Okay, so let's break down this problem step by step. So it will help you understand how you can come up with this solution, which I think is very important for um, recursive problems especially. The planning part may take a while, but it, it is so worth it because then the implementation becomes easier. So let's go ahead and look at this binary tree here that I've created for you. So we have um, we have our root node here, and 4 has a left child and a right child. Now, the question you need to ask yourself is where is it that I am going to reverse these values, right? So I can reverse these values at this point, um, and I can reverse these values at this point. So this is these red boxes are where I need to reverse these values. And then I also need to take that action from top here. So, so the two goes to the seven, right? So um, once we know where we need to position ourselves, we can, to, to do this um, reverse, we can start thinking of the base case. So what is the case that is going to um, stop this algorithm, stop this recursion. Where is the case where we don't need to go any further and do any swapping? So that's the question you need to answer to come up with your base case. Okay, so we know that we need to stop the recursion at the bottom of this tree because in the leaf nodes where um, the root, the node itself is null, we have no work to do. We are not going to swap anything. Um, we need to stop the recursion at this case, and this is when we're going to return the, re the results upwards, right? So we're going to uh, return our to our caller, and then from there, we need to uh, take some action. So the format that works best for understanding this type of problem is that you can think of um, a single node, and what needs to happen at this single node is I need to first go left, to my left and then I need to um, check if I can go further left and if I can't that means that node is null and I've hit my uh, base case right so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to return back to my caller and then I'm going to um, try to go to the right and when I try to go to the right if there is a right node um, that exists that's not null um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, at that point, that is when I'm going to take my action because the swapping needs to happen from this level. And what you need to do is you need to first go to the left, then you need to uh, return, and then you need to try to go to the right and then return. And then from that node, you're going to, you have access to that left and right. And then what you're going to do is just swap them. So that's the idea behind this problem. So let's walk through a case where we go to each node and then ask, can we go to the left? Can we go to the right? Um, and then we turn back to the caller and then swap. So let's walk through this algorithm so it becomes uh, very clear how we're trying to implement this. 
Okay, so when I'm trying to solve this type of problem, I find it very easy to create a small test case within the problem um, and then make sense of it and then apply it to the whole tree. So let's walk through one test case where we're going to traverse the left side first, then the right side, and then the node um, itself. And then that's the positioning we want to do the swapping from. So if I, if I follow this um, root node, so I'll start the recursion from the root node, and then if I go to the left, um, okay, there is something there, it's not null, great. And then I will keep going to the left, okay, there is something there, not null, okay, great. And then um, after it tries to go to the one dot left, this is null, and this is where the base case is going to hit, and we're going to return to the caller. So the caller here is one, and then we're trying to go to the right, and again, this node is itself null, so there's no work to do, return to caller, right? And similarly, What's going to happen is then it's going to one is going to return to its own caller which is two here and then once it has returned to two from the left side um, what we're going to do uh, is try and see if there is a node on this right side here so what we're going to do then is go to two dot right so again this is the path we're doing so first we're going left and then we're going right from the node and then we're returning back to the node okay and then we're going to do the swap so this is when the swap will happen okay so this is the positioning that we need to understand is where we're going to um, apply the changes to the pointers so we're able to invert the tree okay so that's the basic idea here so to review our positioning is going to be we do a swap at two we're going to do a swap at seven here, and then we're going to do a swap at four, where we take this purple box and um, where this pointer, this is the pointer that's going to be swapped at four, okay? So this is what we want to do. Um, and each step, we're going to access the left. So we saw how we access the two dot left, we access the two dot right, um, and then, then the call returned to two, and then we swap the one and three, okay? And then next what happens is this, the two returns to its caller four, and then we try to access four dot right. So four dot right is all of this, right? So we're going to access um, from here. So first we're going to, again, do the same thing. So this is the same process. So, okay, so what you need to realize is that over here on this side of the tree, the same thing is going to happen. So first we're going to go all the way to the left here, and then we'll try to access six on left, which is null. So it's going to, going to return to its caller, which is six. And then we'll try six dot right, that's null. So again, return to caller, right? So then this is going to return to its own caller, which is seven. I hope you can see the similarity between the two sides. The same thing is happening over and over. Um, so this will return to its caller. And um, then we're going to try to access seven dot right so here this this is the node right and then again we'll try to access nine uh, here the nine dot left and then null and the nine dot right is also null so then nine is going to return to its color seven and this is the point that we are going to make um we're going to reverse the nodes so this is how this is where the inversion happens right so again so now six will move here this node will move here and then this node will move here and then what's going to happen is seven is going to return to its caller, which is four. Now you can see that the left side of four has been processed. The right side of four has been processed. So if we look at look back at this diagram, the left has been processed, the right has been processed, and now we are at the positioning we want to make the swap, which is the node four. And this is when all of this, this all of this is going to uh, be swapped with all of this, all of the purple here. So that's when that swap's going to happen. So we're going to swap these two pointers. What I'm going to do here is um, first, I'm going to create a function that will do this recursion for me. And then in the end, we're just going to return the root. Because we're doing this in place, we don't need to create any additional um, data structure to store these values. Um, so I'm going to call my recursive function. We can call this, um, what should we say? We can say reverse verse nodes, and this will intake um, 
a node and we are going to call this function uh, from the outer function which is the invert tree function and we will call this reverse nodes and we will initialize it with the root so we'll the first thing we're going to do is just pass the whole tree in um, with our input which is the root so we'll say root and we'll call this and then we will return um, we'll return the root itself because we're just doing everything in place and just make sure this is intended properly okay that looks better okay um, so now what we need to do first is write our base case so we can say um, if we can say if the node is uh, none then we're going to return so example is if we're at this level and then we try to access one dot left that is null and we have nothing to do so we return to the palette so we'll say return okay next what we're going to do is we will um, call this on the nodes left so remember that our strategy is to go left go right and then from the node itself is where we want to do the processing and the swap right so so we'll, we have node dot left and then we're going to do node dot right okay so this will keep going until we hit the base case which is where a um, node is none right so we are now once this has uh, happened we are at the positioning where we are ready to do the swap so this is the way to swap uh, you can use however you want to do it there's some shortcuts in python that you can use but i'm just going to show the long way and i explained this in my other video um, reverse strings which i will link somewhere here for you to follow and get the idea but the idea basically is that you create a temporary variable to hold on to the value you're about to swap and then you uh, just as keep assigning it until the two values the two pointers in this case have been reversed so let me show you what i mean so we'll say hold is going to be equal to um, node dot, node dot left and then i'm going to say node dot left is equal to node dot right and then we're going to say node dot right is going to be equal to hold so that's perfect um, and that's how we have swapped from the positioning that we wanted to swap from so that looks good give this a run and make sure there's no issues return is outside the function oh okay so this needs to be indented yeah okay this makes sense okay that's that's good run okay awesome accepted and i will go ahead and submit Yay, success. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this recursive solution and then I will uh, turn this into an iterative solution. And for iterative thinking, what you need to visualize here is a list. And the way this is going to work is we're going to go through um, all the left and right children of the node. And at each point, we will add to the list um, and then do the swap. So the time that the swap happens is different from the recursive approach so for example if i'm here at four and i put this for we'll initialize the list with the uh, root and then we'll try to go root dot left and root dot right and we'll just we'll check if the root is not null because if we're down here and we're accessing a null node then there's no processing to be done so at this point what we're going to do is we will swap the two and seven and then we will also access two dot left and two dot right and seven dot uh, left and seven dot right and then push them into the array for further processing so that's kind of the basic idea of the iterative approach um, so let me go ahead and clean up this code so we can try it out um, so we don't need a reverse nodes function and the way we're going to swap is going to be exactly the same, so no change is required there. Um, we do need this condition to check if the node is none or not, because um, that's when we don't push that value <laughs> into our list. 
So let's let me first initialize a list here. So I will call this um, st equals, and I will create my list. And what I'm going to do then is say while len so while there is something in the um, list so while so this is I'm calling it st because it's the same idea as using a stack so while um, st length st is greater than zero so this is when we want to do our processing and what we want to do is we want to pop um, item by item out of this uh, root so we will initialize the list with the root so it has access to the node and then what we want to do is we don't need to call these recursively anymore since we're doing the iterative approach okay so our return will still be the same since we're doing this in place um, okay so what we want to do is we first want to um, access each node from our list. So I will say node equals st.pop. So now we have access to the node and then if node is, so we can say if node is not none, then we can do all of this processing. So this is what we are planning to do. We are going to do the swap. So if we come across a node that's um, not null, we're going to access its left and right and swap those values. And then what we're going to do is push that node's left and that node's right into our um, list for the next level of processing. So when this goes back up to the while. So we can say st.append node.left and st.append no dot right. This looks good. Let me give this a run. List object has no attribute append. Oh, it's misspelled it. Append. Okay, run again. Yay, accepted. Okay, let me submit. Yay, success. Awesome. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and comment down below and let me know what approach you prefer.